The world's oldest hotel is in this valley in Japan, 180 kilometers west of Tokyo. It's 1300 years old and has been run by the same family for 52 generations. In southern Germany, this hotel, the Zum Roten Baron, is 900 years old. It's the oldest in Europe. And in 2008, in San Francisco, this place became the world's first Airbnb rental. It was rented out by two of the company's founders, Joe and Brian. Now there are over 7 million listings on Airbnb. How does that compare to the number of hotel rooms? According to the research group STR, there are roughly 17 million hotel rooms in the world. So in just 12 years, Airbnb became the largest accommodation provider and has just less than half of all the global hotel rooms. The hotel industry is still earning more, pulling in $570 billion globally, nearly three times more than the $169 billion that global short-term rentals earn. Here's the thing. Hotels may have a lead in revenue, at least for now, but both are clearly important parts of the accommodation landscape. Hotels might get more weddings, events, business travelers, and short-term rentals like to boast that they attract large families and young people and visitors who would have otherwise not even considered the destination. But for the most part, they're competing. In this video, I wanna show how with a smart destination strategy, they could be working together and earning more. This is the United Nations World Tourism Organization graph of when people travel. This graph has looked like this for quite some time. It can be different for different destinations. Most peak in the summer months of the Northern Hemisphere and then get a nice bump around the winter holidays. For years, this was also the graph of hotel occupancy. It's no real surprise that hotels do well when the bulk of the world's working and studying population gets time off to travel. And here's how hotels think. They make enough rooms to cover the number of visitors here at peak popularity. Then the rest of the year, most struggle a bit to keep in business. Now it's even harder for many hotels because this graph is now the sum of hotel occupancy and short-term rental occupancy. And an increasing amount is going to short-term rentals. Airbnb estimates that they are taking approximately $450 million in revenue from the hotel industry each year. What if we could make the whole thing more efficient by regulating it in a smart way? Look at airports. They're capitalist enterprises, yet they regulate and coordinate their landing slots, prioritize their big customers, and maximize the number of planes that can land, which benefits the smaller planes. If all the planes just showed up at once and airports prioritized their best customers last second, many of the smaller planes would have to go land someplace else. In other words, some smart planning can make airports more financially efficient and help the airlines they service be more efficient as well. Right now, destinations aren't acting like a well-run airport with a clever operations staff. It's more like the Wild West. But since short-term rentals have only been a major factor for the last eight years or so, it's not much of a surprise. So all of this has been a preamble for me to lay out an idea for a smarter approach to accommodation planning within a destination. I'm not saying this is the only way or the best way, but I certainly think it could offer a better way. And here's my idea. Here's that rough occupancy chart. Months go down here on the x-axis and number of overnight stays on the y-axis. What if hotels didn't try to provide enough rooms to service the peak visitors up here and then scramble to fill the rooms here and here the rest of the year? What if instead they only provided enough rooms for the off-peak season down here? Why? Well, if hotels focus on this part, it eliminates the peaks and valleys of their business model, and they can maintain year-round very high occupancy. They can raise their rates a bit because some people really want to stay at hotels, and the supply will be more limited. Then we use the strengths of the private short-term rentals, which is that they can easily open and close without a bunch of operating costs, absorbing the peaks and valleys. This model would allow for more total short-term rental nights throughout the year, 
but they'd have to be more regulated and be flexible with their availability, opening and closing their properties as demand dictates. There are a lot of clear winners here. Hotels become more profitable and have higher occupancy and ADRs or average daily rates. And more people can rent their rooms or private properties throughout the year. So who would lose out? Two groups. One, those people who want to build new hotels all the time and don't want anyone to tell them that they can't. New hotels would have to be regulated so that the capacity only grows at the pace of the bottom of the off-peak season. And the other potential losers are that new batch of professional Airbnb renters who want to rent all year round or buy up apartment buildings and make them into Airbnb hotels. There'd just be no guarantee they could keep all those properties on the market all year. So it would encourage more flexible private rentals and likely free up more flats for the local use, which would help with the short-term housing crisis in many cities. I wanted to get a second opinion, so I spoke with the head of Europe's Short-Term Rental Association and ran my idea by him. I think it's a brilliant idea to go for the cities and both have hotels that are competitive, that can run their business and make a substantial investment in short-term rental where you actually make the two things go together. Instead of fighting each other, you get, you get a win-win situation. The city is a winner, the hotels are winning, and the short-term rental business can actually contribute positively in the peak areas where it's impossible for the hotels to match it's impossible to run a hotel if there are too many hotels addressed for the three week summer season or the festival or the big uh, events coming on for the city. So this is a very, very clever way to think about it. Nobody actually did that from the major cities, but they need to start thinking uh, new ways. And I think the coronavirus actually will make new ways of investment in capacity. We see all over Europe that investments in hotels are on standby now because we need the liquidity. Does that mean that the cities can't grow, can't make big events in the future? Of course they can, by using the capacity in an intelligent way. I asked him about the losers in this scenario. Actually, there's room for everybody. Even the, 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 the uh, hotels where you take a block and make it uh, 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 this kind of, of uh, 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 you could call it professional short-term rental. They would have the winning of, let's say, in the summer season. Right. You don't have any students in the city. Then in the summer season, season, it's for tourism. And then when you come into September and the university opens, you can make a three-month lease. You can have uh, people coming in, expats, for three, two months, six months in the winter time, in the low season for those kind of apartments. And then when you have the peaks, you just swift to short-term rental tourism. So I think the losers in this is in the end of the day, no one. Because oh. who are the, no, because who are the ones who wants to invest and invest? It's not even the hotel years. The hotel years today don't own their own building. That doesn't mm. exist. They don't own, the, all the big hotels around the world are owned by capital investors. So maybe they would lose uh, one or, or two uh, of those kind of things. But I think the hotels in the long run will win and they can go into the short-term rental market as well. Because if you have the good brand, you have uh, the trustworthy uh, brand in the hotel sector and you say, okay, now we are going into the high season. We don't have more rooms spare, but we have actually 10, 20, 30 apartments that you can use. So I think we will see uh, 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 an integration, not only of the types of beds, but, but an integration of the value chain where IT integrates with the booking platforms, with the, uh, with the hoteliers, with the short-term rentals. So, the old fact, we, the coronavirus did one good thing. It, it pushed us 10 years ahead in, 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 in evolution. Because now we need to go digital. Now we need to think clever about the capacity in our city. Again, this is just an idea. If you can think of a better way to do this, please add your comments below 
and let's get the dialogue started. 